Two dogs are dead. They're a Laurel County owner in jail after police say they made a very disturbing discovery. Today we learned more about the effort to recover missing evidence in a Scott County murder investigation. We have the front on the way and that high pressure system still off toward the East Coast. How they interact together, I'll show you that and what that means for us coming up next. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. Barbara Bailey has the day off. A Southern Kentucky man is behind bars this midday after police say he was found using meth, exposing it to a child and his two dogs. And both of the dogs are now dead. The child is with Protective Services. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is tracking this disturbing story out of Laurel County. And that's our top story at noon. Phil? started about 930 on Tuesday morning when police say they received a complaint of a couple of people fighting here on White Oak Road, which is west of London, just off of Kentucky Highway 80. The police say when they got here, they found a whole lot more than simply a fight. They say Benjamin Burdett had been using meth with pipes, chemicals and other drug materials in close proximity of a two year old child. What's more, they found two small dogs, one of them a terrier, appearing to be in distress. Both dogs later died. I went to the Cumberland Valley Animal Hospital where technicians and vets believe the animals were fed meth in a malicious way. I don't know how you get a dog to eat meth. I, I've not come in contact with it. I don't know if it tastes good to a dog. I have no clue how you would get a dog to ingest it unless you maybe you stick it in a hot dog like anything else that you'd poison a dog with. Benjamin Burdett is facing charges of wanted endangerment in addition to cruelty to animals. What's more, police believe that he's also a sex offender. They charged him with two counts of failure to comply with the sex offender registry. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you. Burdett remains in jail this afternoon. He was scheduled to be arraigned this morning in Laurel District Court. Attorneys for a man accused of killing a former Scott County bus driver continue to argue that the charges against him should be dropped. Police say Nicholas Willinger beat Sue Jones to death at her home on jo in Georgetown in 2010. But since then, some evidence has been lost in the case. WKYT's Victor Puente has the latest from the hearing. Victor? Today we learned more about the last time those files were seen and when state police realized they were missing. Former Kentucky State Police Detective Jason Lovins took the stand today and testified about the weeks following the retirement of Buck Brennan. Brennan had led the early investigation into the murder of Sue Jones, and two notebooks full of evidence he collected have gone missing. Lovins said they first realized the evidence was missing after the arrest of Nick Willinger, which was well after Brennan had retired. Willinger is charged with murder, robbery, and burglary and was set to go to trial this month until that evidence couldn't be found. His attorney says notes from early interviews with the other person charged in this case, C.G. Jefferson, could have helped their case and have asked for the charges against him to be dismissed. Lovin said they last saw the files during a case review, and when they realized the folders weren't available, they tried to get the evidence off of Brennan's computer, but that didn't work either. Myself and some of the detectives contacted computer technology, said no, we've got a huge problem. We're trying to find this computer to get into the hard drive and recover documents. They got back to us within a day and said that computer is gone. We destroyed it and wiped the hard drive. What are they doing with them? They said it was an old piece of junk. We're not going to reissue it. There'll be another hearing on this case on September 8th, and then a judge will decide if it'll go to trial. Prosecutors say notes from other detectives are enough for them to move forward. In Scott County, Victor Puente, WKYT. The other person charged in this case, C.G. Jefferson, has already pleaded guilty to complicity to murder. We're learning new information about the circumstances behind a deadly shooting at an eastern Kentucky home. Kentucky State Police were called to a house on Brown Ridge Road yesterday morning. That's where Marvin Adkins reportedly got into an argument with Teddy Johnson before running off. We've now learned that Johnson followed Adkins, then shot him and killed him. 
Troopers say they found Adkins' body in a field across the road. Johnson is now charged with murder. A man is recovering at UK Hospital this afternoon after an overnight crash in central Kentucky. It happened about midnight on Long Lick Pike, north of Georgetown. Scott County Sheriff's deputies say the driver lost control of his truck while looking at his cell phone. His truck flipped over a few times before landing in a creek bed. It is not clear right now whether the man was ejected from the truck. He was outside the vehicle, though, when deputies arrived. And traffic is back to normal on I-75 this midday after a vehicle caught fire near the Clays Ferry Bridge this morning. It all happened around 7.30 this morning at the Fayette-Madison County line. This is an eyewitness picture from the scene there on the Madison County side. There is no word yet if anyone was injured in that. A Lexington man is facing robbery charges this midday, accused of viciously beating someone who owed him money. According to his, his arrest citation, Hayden Rogers repeatedly hit the victim in the head with a pipe wrench outside a hotel near New Circle and Richmond Road. A second suspect wanted in the case, Kevin Bentley, is still on the run this midday. Well, the pleasant temperatures of the last couple of days are gone, and it's back to the dog days of summer as the humidity returns. So how long can we expect this pattern to last? WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center. Yeah, you know, that pattern is going to last for quite some time. I have in my seven-day forecast not much change from today all the way into next week. And so the, the, what you're going to be dealing with is the same story day after day, and that is mostly dry conditions. Can't rule out a couple of rumbles of thunder in the forecast, whether it be during the daylight hours or during the nighttime hours, and temperatures there in the mid to upper 80s each and every single day. Temperatures right now at 83 degrees in Lexington. Many of us in the low to mid 80s, a couple of us over toward the east southeast sitting there in the upper 70s. So we'll finish off right around 87. There is a late chance at a couple of rumbles in the forecast, and we're going to be going over that and also the next few days. How many chances do we have as we travel off towards your weekend? Because I know we got plans going on. Friday night football, a lot happening. I'm going to break down your forecast in just about 10 minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. We thank you. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin has submitted to the federal government his proposal to overhaul the state's Medicaid program, but he has made some changes. They include covering allergy testing and private duty nursing. People who are in hospice care will not have to pay premiums or co-pays. And the elimination of automatic dental and vision benefits will be delayed for three months and people can still get those benefits by earning credits by doing things like earning a GED. About 400,000 Kentuckians have health insurance through the state's expanded Medicaid program. Bevin's proposal now has to go through a 45-day submission and comment period before the Secretary of Health and Human Services in Washington will decide whether or not to approve it. Regardless, Bevin says beginning next year, Kentucky taxpayers must begin paying a portion of Medicaid expansion costs for the first time. Now, you can read the governor's entire health waiver. We have it up right now on WKYT.com. It's quite detailed, but uh, some uh, certainly are interested mm -hmm. in finding out more about that. Okay, it is the start of a new school year at the University of Kentucky. Students have been moving back to campus over the last two weeks and classes are now underway for the fall semester. To kick off the new year, a welcome back festival will be held tonight. The event will feature free food from Raisin Cane's, Crank and Boom ice cream, and Insomnia cookies. It will be held from 5 to 7 behind the King Alumni House and Stuckert Career Center at the corner of Rose and Euclid. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, and our best to them for the new school year. Keep it here on WKYT. The death toll continues to rise in the wake of a powerful earthquake in central Italy. We'll have the latest coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, pop star Britney Spears is giving the clothes off her back to help people of Louisiana. Find out how you can win her outfit and also help flood victims next on WKYT. Welcome back. We're following a breaking international news alert. The American University of Afghanistan in Kabul is under attack. CBS News says several American professors are inside, along with possibly hundreds of students. Witnesses say they heard gunshots and then an explosion. An award winning Associated Press photographer has tweeted that he is also trapped inside. We're following this developing story. We're posting updates on WKYT.com and hope to have more within this hour of WKYT News. Rescue workers are racing to pull people out of the the rubble in central Italy. It follows a powerful earthquake. At least 73 people were killed and thousands left homeless. Seth Doan reports from Amatrice, one of the hardest hit areas. 
Rescue crews carried a young girl to safety after she was pulled from the rubble in Amatrice. The earthquake jolted many awake, flattened homes, and trapped people in collapsed structures. It struck just after 3.30 this morning. One town clock stopped, marking the time. Dazed residents woke to find parts of these rural communities leveled. In some cases, walls were cracked open or destroyed. This woman says a wall fell next to her, but luckily didn't hit her. This is a remote, mountainous region. This is an area where Italians in particular will come on vacation. One of the main issues at this point is just getting the heavy equipment in to sift through some of this rubble and, of course, the ambulances in to try to get uh, those who are wounded out. In the village of Ilica, just about eight miles from Amatrice, frustrated survivors waited for rescue crews to dig out loved ones buried under the rubble. This man says no one has gone there yet. They sealed off the area and kicked us out. At the Vatican, Pope Francis skipped his traditional catechism lesson and prayed for the victims of the earthquake instead. Seth Doan, CBS News, Amatrice, Italy. The area is not far from where a deadly earthquake struck in 2009, killing more than 300 people. Health officials in Florida are trying to determine whether they have a third active Zika zone on their hands. Florida's Governor Rick Scott announced a non-travel related case of the virus in the Tampa Bay region. Officials in the state already are tackling a cluster of Zika cases in the Miami area. The state says there are 620 cases of the virus right now, 70 of which are among pregnant women. 42 of the total are non-travel related. Hillary Clinton's campaign furiously defending her today against a new AP report. It casts a shadow over her time at the State Department. The report claims more than half of non-government officials that Clinton met during her tenure donated money to her family's fundraising foundation. Her opponent, Donald Trump, says the Justice Department should appoint a special counsel to investigate her so-called pay-to-play politics. We'll have some reaction coming up on that, a new report on WKYT News in a few minutes at 1230. Well, pop superstar Britney Spears is helping out her home state of Louisiana as it is dealing with those devastating floods there. Spears, who grew up in the city of Kentwood, is teaming up with the American Red Cross and the crowdfunding website CrowdRise to raffle off the outfit she'll wear during the upcoming MTV Video Music Awards. The money raised will go to help flood victims. For every $10 donation, fans will be entered for a chance to win the outfit or a trip to New York City to meet the star in person. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Coming up at 1230, there have been dozens of car break-ins in Nicholasville in the last three weeks. And there were even more again last night. And police need your help. We'll have details coming up. It's really about the temperatures and the heat the next few days, but there is a thunderstorm threat in the forecast. I'm going to show you when you can expect that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, it looks pretty good outside as of right now. Now, we have a mixture of sun and clouds now, but like I was talking about early this morning, that there is a small chance that you can see a couple of showers, a couple of rumbles of thunder, especially central, north, and western zones. And as of right now, the timing on this. Looks a little bit later. I would say evening and night is probably your best bet. So the rest of the afternoon, I really don't see many issues whatsoever. So if you're trying to make plans, head out to the park with the kiddos. You can still take off out toward the grocery store. No big issue as you're traveling early this or early this afternoon. That is Lexington with that mixture of sun and clouds. So things look good now. But like I said, later on there is that potential for a small chance and maybe a shower or thunderstorm. So let's get into the afternoon. Obviously, like I've been talking about, not much going on. Go a little bit later and watch about 7 p.m. crosses over the river, central, north, western zones. That is your best bet. And then just slowly falls apart as we head throughout the nighttime hours. So there is that chance, but it's really the chance when most of us are indoors, most of us are there watching TV, having a late dinner. That's pretty much it. And it's really nothing to worry about either. You'll get some rumbles, you'll get some heavy downpours, and that's about it. Slight chance there of rain on Friday. Listen, from now throughout next week, I mean, you go off towards your Monday and Tuesday, this is the setup for us. It's a summertime pattern, 20, 30% chances of rain, temperatures there in the mid to upper 80s, and that's it. So it really, I don't see much in the forecast to really worry about. Pretty muggy though. For the football games there on Friday evening. Heading off towards your weekend, it's not going to change all that much. 89 degrees both Saturday and Sunday, add the moisture to it, and it will feel like the mid 90s both of those days. 
There is a slight chance, a small chance each day, but I would say Sunday is probably a better opportunity, still at 30% as opposed to 20% on Saturday. Steamy, muggy, most day dry, just can't rule out that afternoon shower, thunderstorm in the forecast. And the next seven days are pretty easy to forecast. I mean, you can see that all the way through next week. 20-30% chances of rain with temperatures in the mid to upper 80s and some right there around 90 degrees. Now this is just above average, so we're coming out of a pattern, a fall light pattern where we had a nice little shot of cool and drier air, but now we go back to that summer setup. But you got to remember we're still roughly a month away from actual fall, so it's, it's going to take some time to actually get this on out of here. But for the most part, I mean, it's not a bad forecast. It's not the best. The best has been the past three days. <laughs> right, we've already we're had past the best. that. Yeah. As good as it gets. You can't get used to anything That's exactly for too long. Right. Yeah. So true. You got that right. And it shows you that on the seven days. <laughs> right. It sure does. Yeah. All right, keep it here on WKYT. The Colonels are through with the heavy lifting, and now comes the polish. And a special honor for a wildcat from right here in the Commonwealth. Dave Baker is next with sports. And we'll check stocks as we head to break this afternoon. The major market indicators off a bit. Great players and great fans certainly make SEC football a one-of-a-kind spectacle, but more so than other leagues. It's great characters that make the game we play here in the South extra special. And now the Cats have a young man who's sure to get plenty of attention this year. His given name is Will Tom Collins. That's a good Southern name, isn't it? And you know what? Ask anybody, they'll say his name is Taco Meat. Collins is a fullback out of Breathitt County. He was told by Mark Stoops on Sunday that he'd been put on scholarship. Collins said yesterday he was really excited, but nothing's really changed. The next morning when I got up um, after the night, obviously I was still excited, you know, and, and was loving everything that was, you know, going on. But I remember I came out to practice and I thought to myself, I was thinking it was going to be like practice is real easy now. This is the exact same stuff I've been doing, you know. So from that standpoint, yeah, they, Coach Stoops, as, you know, I've been a walk-on here for three years and he always has taken great care of the walk ons I never felt really, outside of the fact that I wasn't getting the money, I never felt really that I was any different than anybody else on the team. And down in Richmond, EKU football opens its season at Purdue on September 3rd. And like Kentucky, they're starting that juggling act now between school and game preparation. New head coach Mark Elder said his team has its entire offense and defense installed, something that is easier said than done, especially with a new staff. Oh, man, camp went great. Uh, our team, we, we came out ready to rock, and uh, we, we, we improved in greatly you know, since the spring. I thought we had a really good camp. Uh, almost every single day we took steps forward to become a better team. Uh, we only had probably what I'd consider two, two practices that weren't really focused, that weren't what uh, up to the standard here. So by and large, going all the way through camp and only having two that you wish you had back is, is not bad. And the field is set for the Midsummer Classic, the 147th running of the Travers up at Saratoga. And Preakness winner Exaggerator, the 3 to 1 favorite. He draws the number seven post. Arrogant and American Freedom, both trained by Bob Baffert, are stuck inside at 1 and 2. Connect, who won the Curlin Stakes on J July 29th, is the second choice at 4 to 1. The Travers will also feature the 1 2 finishers in the Belmont Stakes. Creator and Destin. Destin at 10 to 1 has post 8. Creator 15 to 1 will break from post 12. It's the first full field for the Travers. Since 1977, as everybody tries to position themselves for the Breeders' Cup. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, we'll hear more from the football Wildcats as they wrap up summer camp. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. Bill, what do you think happened if Andrea went home and said, Mama, I'm in love? His name is Taco Meat. <laughs> That's a look at sports. That's a very good question. I, I, I've, I've got an idea what the answer is, but that's a look at sports on this Wednesday. <laughs> oh, Mama what would be think? so yeah. proud. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. And you're a lot like your mom, so it would, uh, right? There you go. <laughs> we think hey, we hope you'll keep it here on WKYT. We're back in a moment. There's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. Funeral arrangements are now set for a Georgetown College football player who tragically died earlier this week. Did Clinton Foundation donors get special treatment from Hillary Clinton? Donald Trump says no doubt. I'm Weijia Jang at the White House with that story coming up. And tonight's Powerball jackpot is $127 million and Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $76 million.